Well, my guest tonight, as you know, we always have candidates, not sitting members. We've got a candidate who's a candidate himself, has his own party and is running candidates in every single electorate. Mr Clive Palmer, welcome to the Hi, show. It's great to be here, Jill. I admit I was sceptical when you announced only a few weeks before the election, I'm going to run a candidate in every, part, in every electorate. You, a lot of it was right in. You've had it and you've only lost one. Now, Labor's lost a couple, but... You know, given you didn't have a lot of time to check them, that's not bad attrition rate, is oh, well, it? Well, we were dealing with them a bit longer than the time we announced it, but we've got people that are committed. They just think the other two guys are boring, don't offer much for Australia. Or you didn't have a six-point boat plan that they had to memorise, Well, I think? couldn't remember the six points. <laughs> <laughs> but we, maybe we just had to think of common-sense policies. You know? That bloke in Victoria, though, yeah. his sin seemed to be that he said somebody might get lucky at an election party. Was that his worst thing, or was no, there no, more to that? No, the next day he was talking about... Uh, uh, shooting people and digging them up and uh, urinating on their bones. So oh, OK, so there was more that, that was to it than we more, saw. Yeah. Right, OK, so you yeah. were happy to do that. Yeah. Let's go to this week. Yeah. I'd say the first couple of weeks, you weren't probably getting the attention you probably wanted. You weren't one of the main players. They weren't well, debating you. Is that why you twerked on radio this week? Because, no, no, as you said, you're now the biggest thing on Twitter. You know, I love to twerk, you know, and I thought I should do it. Are uh, you telling me you knew what twerking was before? Because well, it looked like you hadn't done it before. Well, uh, well, I hadn't actually seen it done. I'd heard of it, you know. And Carl actually showed me how to twerk. And he challenged me. I always like a challenge. And certainly the... Uh, the economy is a challenge at the moment, but neither Rudd or Abbott will address it. So I thought, well, you know, I shouldn't be too frightened to twerk. Does it worry you at all that that's what you're probably going to be known for in this election campaign, the candidate who twerked? Well, we'll see. We've got another week to go. We launched our campaign last Sunday, and since then we've had an enormous amount of support across the country. And I feel that there's a lot of people the first two weeks of the election now finally realise that Abbott and Rudd don't know anything. But you said the reason you twerked, you said that the candidates, are, that Tony Abbott, Kevin Rudd, they're boring, yeah, that they it, was, boring. it seemed to be an effort to liven it up. But really, don't we want a Prime Minister, especially one's going to be on the world stage and doing things? A bit of boring's OK, isn't it? Not really. I mean, I think we want someone that's uh, a member of the community, wants to serve the community and uh, be part of it. And twerking's part of life. I know every day I go out, put on a different face, I come home at night, hop into bed with my wife, and that's a critical time for me because everyone does that I think and their husband or their partner and then you can have a real conversation about life and things that are dear to you. Where's the twerking fit in? Well I get up every morning and you know, I, always, I always like to think life's a continuation. If there's new things to do, why shouldn't you do it? Do you think it'll actually get your votes though? Being well, I, serious. Well, well I didn't twerk for votes. I twerked, Attention? No I twerked because Carl asked me to do it and I thought well why not? Some people look at things and say why? Like Robert Kennedy, I look at things that never were and say, why not? You know? It's interesting you bring up the US political scene because I sometimes wonder, do you see yourself as a bit of a Donald Trump of the Australian campaign? <laughs> You're a wealthy man who seems to like the media. You don't mind a bit of media yeah. attention. But he's never really taken seriously or having an, have an impact. Well, that's only by the media. I think the people of Australia take me seriously. And, of course, in this campaign, it's interesting you mentioned the United States because on one hand we've got Kevin Rudd, who's brought over Obama's media team, telling us what to do. On the other hand, we've got Tony Abbott, that's got someone that knows News Limited living in the United States, not a citizen of Australia, to telling us what we should do. So we think it's time we had an Australian party run by Australians. I'm going to get to some of the more serious stuff, but I gather you've got some news on polling. You were just telling me off yeah, camera well, about um, some polling you've seen. Well, we had some polling done in, this, in Tony Abbott's seat about a week or so ago. It was indicating that... That's the seat of Warringah. In Warringah, Sydney. yeah. It was indicating that uh, our candidate together with the uh, preferences from Labor, may, may make a, an indent into Tony's majority or could put him at risk. And what we found out today was that uh, the Liberal Party was so concerned that now the, the Labor Party is giving Tony Abbott their preferences over our party, which means if you want to vote Liberal, you should vote Labor. With respect, you've spent the week saying you don't believe polls. They can be manipulated. You yeah. paid money to get them done. So the only polls you believe are the ones you actually suit you. Yeah, well, it's tr no, well, actually, <laughs> what, I, what I'm highlighting there is that we think it's between Labor and Liberal. But here's a situation where the, Lib the uh, Labor Party is giving their preferences to the Liberal Party, who should be their mortal enemy. Our view is that both the parties have got nothing to offer Australia and we need to look at real issues. Let's look at those issues. Uh, yeah. One of your main ones is a slashing income tax, which you say will generate more economic stimulation. I yeah. think that's, again, going back to the US, I think that was the famous Ronald Reagan supply side tax cut. Uh, well, it was, but it's a bit different in Australia. And when you look at the, the analysis in the Australian press, they, they focus on the, the stimulatory effect of it. But if you um, 
you know, if you reduce tax by 15%, it's $2,500 for the average Australian. And of course, every time it's spent in the economy, the government gets a 10% GST. Now, the analysis you've got in your hand there... Yes, I was yeah, just yeah, going to quote the yeah. SMH today, claim yeah, the, the, the that your SMH. economic theory yeah. is false. No, well, Politifax wrong. claims it's false. They have Treasury estimates that said for each $100 <laughs> handed to consumers, $85 is eventually spent rather than the $1,000, you claim. Yeah, well, that's not true, of course, because uh, tax comes from a number of areas. GST, when you spend more money, you're getting a group tax and other things like that. So it's just not true what they're saying there. I don't have enough debate about that. But our major policy really is not that one. Our major policy is that we're saying that companies who pay their tax now quarterly in advance based on an estimate should have to pay it at the end of the year when they know what they've earned. There's $70 billion that's paid that way to the Australian government. If we could release that $70 billion into the economy, every time it turns over, not only does it create jobs, it creates an extra $7 billion for the government. Let's look at another couple of your, your issues, uh, policies. One of them uh, that's been looked at is that you're talking about costings, that you have a $70 billion black hole yourself. And I saw your question on it. You said sometimes you shouldn't worry about the details on this. The bigger picture is more important. It would stimulate the economy. Well, well certainly um, you don't want to rely on Treasury because we know that Treasury said we'd have a balanced budget. But do you budget. have a $70 billion black hole? No, we don't. And, and of course, if um, we let people pay their tax at the end of the year, you still get the $70 billion anyway. It's just a question of timing. It doesn't need to be funded. Where would the money come from such a big stimulus package then? Well, the money, first of all, stays in the businesses' hands. They haven't got to pay it in advance as they do at the moment. So they've got the $70 billion instead of paying it, which they're doing now, in advance, and they can spend it in their businesses, employ people, invest and stimulate Where the economy. Where do you get those figures for the $70 billion? From the Treasury estimates in August. But uh, you just said you didn't no, believe well, the Treasury well, no, estimates. No, I don't, I don't rely on the Treasury, but they're the only information you've got about the projections of the future. They're projecting in the future $70 billion of corporate tax. I think this year it was something like $68 billion. So it's in that vicinity. Because the trouble with black holes is, you as a businessman would know, it'd mm. be like, oh, I don't know, announcing you're going to build a big boat and no one knows where the money's coming from. Well, the money's from. coming from my chequebook for the, for the boat. Do you have enough money for the whole boat? Because yeah, I have I do, seen yeah. estimates that it's worth, that it could cost up to a billion dollars. Are you going to spend every red cent well, you've got on that well, Titanic? Well, if I, I've got a lot more than a billion dollars in assets, but, but that's not really the issue, you know. Um, I'm doing it as a private citizen, it's my money and uh, I'll spend it as I want it. I've earned it, and why shouldn't I? No, but the money's there. I'm just talking about yeah, black the holes there. and there's announcing no, no, things before... I, I don't have any black holes, Janine. I've been in business <laughs> for 40 years. I haven't got any debts to anybody. I haven't ever been in liquidation, although the government is the number one petitioner of bankruptcies and liquidations in Australia today. They're closing Australia down. We need to get it, get it going again. I'm going to just throw a couple of issues at you that are in the news and see what your well, opinion good, is on yeah. them. Syria. Now, you have, uh, we, we're looking at the moment that the US might go it alone and do some surgical strikes. You've been critical of the US in the past. We won't go into it. You've made comments about the CIA. You're very, you seem to be more pro-China. What's your position on the US hitting Syria? Well, they're just perceptions, you know. I mean, I well, think we've got to think about who we are and where we come from. We've got a long, very strong relationship with the United States, which was forged in the Second World War. And that's something we've got to respect. And, and we've got to realise that we're in that orbit overall. So you'd support them if they no, did decide to strike Syria? Well, well, all I'm saying is that we need to look, first of all, at um, what's really happened there. And I think, the, the, uh, like they're saying in the United Kingdom, we're still waiting for the I investigation to take place. So I don't think you can do anything preemptive until you know what's happened. So you're a bit wary on that. Burkas. Today, Tony Abbott said he would be concerned to see many more burkas in the community. This mm. was over a comment that one of his candidates made. Do you feel threatened by burkas? No, I don't personally feel threatened by that. I think we have to respect women and uh, we have to understand that women have different religion. Their religious freedom is very important in Australia. Certainly, I don't want to uh, ju uh, judge another woman's religion and what she should be wearing because we have to respect each other. And uh, respecting each other means we expect their right to worship. So I don't think that it comes like that. And I don't think we want to you know, stimulate any sort of differences. We've got to unify Australians rather than divide them. Interesting you talk on women. I've been reading a book, uh, there's a, the story of Clive Palmer. Yep. In this it said... I couldn't believe everything you read, Janine. OK, huh? well, there's one there that said that uh, during a campaign you gave a lot of money to Right to Life. You felt strongly on abortion. Mm. This was raised as a fear campaign by Julia Gillard. Mm. Uh, if you were in power, what's your view on abortion? Would you in any way limit it or bring out back restrictions on abortion? And are you still a Right to Life? -er? Well, let's have a look at it realistically. That talks about a comment made about me in 1971. 
Tony Abbott's changed. He reckons, he reckons he's got So you've changed your view on abortion? Well, I'm just trying to say to you, <laughs> these things are irrelevant only when people try to have a go at you. That's something about, from about 45 years ago that they've dra dra dragged up. But I, I can only answer you what our policy is today. And our party has a policy that we have a conscience vote on all social issues. That's not just abortion. That's same-sex marriage and it's euthanasia. Because we don't believe people should have to vote against their real conscience and how they feel, either for religious or other reasons. And we think that's a very enlightened policy. Now, your question will be, say, OK, but what's, what's your, your view? view right? Exactly. Okay. Very good. You've been doing a bit of media, well, haven't well, you? <laughs> you know what we're going to yeah, say. I've had, and? Of, I've had a lot of questions on that. And I'm the leader of our party, and if we truly believe in a conscience vote, we want people to exercise their conscience. I, don't, as leader, don't want to intimidate them, like Tony Abbott does or like other people do, and say, so you must vote this way. My commitment as party leader is that, that people really and truly exercise their conscience. If we have a party that has a for or against policy on a social issue, we're just guaranteeing that it's introduced or that it changes because so we have you know, the two-party system in Australia. We need diversity in this country. We need, like our ethnic community, we need different ideas from different people. OK, one other one. Uh, this week in the leaders' debate, we saw t um, Kevin Rudd... What, what debate was that? Oh, well, it was a forum, shall we call it. It was on Sky. You need yeah. to watch Sky. China, Sky great, um, great. there was a question about a person concerned from a person concerned about Chinese investment in our agricultural land. Mm -hmm. Kevin Rudd seemed to veer to the right on that and make a comment that he was concerned about it, about too much Chinese investment in particular. Where do you stand on that, given that you have business dealings with China? Well, I think it's important to realise that any investment in Australia um, is only governed by our sovereignty and our parliament. We make the laws on it and uh, the parliament has the ultimate power at any time to resume anything. And we shouldn't let people invest in this country unless they respect our laws and, and carry out things in accordance. So Chinese state-owned enterprises buying up agricultural land, do you think we should be tougher on it? Well, I think we are, we, we've got the ultimate control of it. I mean, I'm coming from a place on the Gold Coast where in the 70s and 80s the Japanese bought and sold it four, four times because they lost a lot of money on it. They, they, every, there was about 86 golf courses developed between the Gold Coast and Brisbane. You now there's only about seven. And, you know, well, a lot of people... Well, there was an opportunity for you in that, Well, wasn't a it? lot of people made a lot of money. A lot of <laughs> Australians did that, you know, and there's a lot of people on the land that we don't want to, we don't want to press... That but are you worried down. about... Upsetting the Chinese and with these kind of comments? Not really, but I'm worried about really not having enough food supply in Australia. I'm worried about labelling in Australia, which, which stops Australians buying Australian product. I'm worried about the agricultural industry. That's what yeah, I'm worried about. It's interesting you say about buying Australian, because so yeah. many people got annoyed by your election paraphernalia because the DVD was the, it said made in China on the back. Well, that wasn't a good move, was it? It wasn't uh, really smart. Well, that was an excellent move because <laughs> you know we had a situation where the media is controlled by one group in this country, and everyone uh, likes to preempt the Australian people's decision at the election. It'll be this party, it'll be that party. So we couldn't get any traction. So we had to get six million DVDs made to give to Australians within three or four days. And that p capacity didn't exist in Australia. So what we say is much more important than the cost of doing the DVD because it affects the whole nation. And we had to get that message out to the people of Australia. And of course, people like to take a cheap shot, but they don't take a cheap shot at our policies. No one's criticised our policies. Just to wind up, having been through, I know we've got another week to go, yeah. but do you have any more, having actually been on the campaign trail, like yeah. those guys out there are, you know, having <laughs> to knock on doors, do you have any more respect for politicians now? Well, I do. I think everyone that offers himself for public service should be respected. I mean, I, I admire Kevin Rudd and Tony Abbott that they're prepared to do that, undergo that sacrifice for their families, but I just take the view they're totally incompetent and that they'll lead this nation in the wrong direction. So I think we need people that have had some experience in doing that. If some of the polls are right and you yeah. don't win any seats next week, will you think this whole effort was worth it and what do you do then? Well, no, um, governments may come and go, but ideas go on forever. And this election has been devoid of ideas from the major parties. And we've, we've created a whole new economic basis for this country and a blueprint to go forward. So you will continue? Of course we will. And, uh, and I've been involved in politics for many years. I've been in many federal campaigns, many of them successful. Not actually running, though. This is the first, isn't it? Well, this is the first actually For having running. your own party. I've been the sort of person that's written the sort of things down for Mr Abbott to say. But now I'm actually saying some things. All right. We're going to have to leave it there. But Clive Palmer, thank you for your time tonight. Thanks, Janine. It's been wonderful.